Welcome back, Focus Fanatics. In this video, I'll be walking you through setting up a new employee. Now, there are several different ways you can access the employee screen. The first way, you can simply just click on Employee Employees to pull up the employee screen, or you can just click on the employees icon here. Either way, you'll have the same screen. Now, when you're going to add an employee, a little shortcut that you can do is select an existing employee with the same job so it has all the same defaults in it. And what I mean by that is if you have any options selected, your job, your default pay rate, by selecting employee, a similar employee, when you click on add, you don't have to go back and modify those fields. So in our case, we're going to add a new bartender. And so you can see our job is bartender and our pay rate is 725, just our default values. So we can go ahead and click on add. And you can see our values stay the same. So let's go ahead and type in our new bartender. First name Matt, last name Kovo. And when we tab over, the nickname, nickname defaults to the first name and the last name's initial. All right, uh, another required field that we have is our access code. There's two ways you can come up with an access code. You can simply click on the access code label, and it will generate the first available access code for you. Or you can just type in a code up to four digits long. And so that's those fields are required, and our job is also required. And so since we use this as a template, we got our bartender and our pay rate 725. All we have to do is click save, and now we have created our employee. But obviously, you've noticed there's a bunch of other fields in here that we can utilize to further um, uh, put, put some user credentials in here um, that the employee has. One of the things over here, the picture, we can actually actually associate a picture of the employee. So when they log in and out. They'll see a picture of themselves, and so they know they're they're on the um, right screens here. So if you want to associate a picture, just simply click on the white spot. You can either browse for the actual file, or you can look for the image right here. And once we select it, you can see a picture of the employee. All right, now ID one and ID two can be up to 20 alphanumeric characters that identify the employee. And these fields can also can be masked to enforce a specific format. ID2, IDD, ID2 is used for the ADP interface, and the meaning of this field will vary by restaurant. Um, now these masks are set up in miscellan miscellaneous general within the time card section, timekeeping section. So in this scenario, we have ID1 set up as a social security number. So you can see it just looks like that. And ID2 is just a random set of numbers. Our address, you know, just like you expect, just our address, city, state, zip code. Emergency contact, it's kind of a cool field to have in case something happens to an employee, you need to contact somebody. So we can just put a name down there. We can put their phone number. And phone number one is going to be a primary phone number associated with this employee. And phone number two, it could be a secondary phone, whether it's a landline, a mobile phone, whatever you want to use. OK, we have language. Uh, it defaults to English, or you can also have a Spanish uh, uh, Spanish language right there. And what Spanish does is if you select Spanish, all the clock in and clock out, all the prompts will be in Spanish. So when you clock in and out, etc, it will it'll it'll display the Spanish uh, uh, verbiage for you. All right, so you got your birth date. You can type in your birth date, 
your higher date. Last raise, uh, the last time the employee has a raise, you can enter it in the system if you want. And if they've been terminated, you can specify the day they've been terminated. You have a termination reason from all your predefined reasons here. See what's going on there. And we also have a keyboard. So let's say you're on the front of the house and you want to add an employee. You don't have a physical keyboard. You can simply just click on the keyboard and it'll show an on-screen keyboard that you can type all your fields with. You'll notice on the top left here, first name means that we're going to be changing the first name field. Now if you want to switch over to the next field, all you have to do is click tab and you'll notice it keeps changing the tab name that you can, can modify with your keyboard. Okay, the W4 information this is all of your um, um, withholding information. Of course, you can do single, married, married slash single rate, any additional withholding amounts, and your allowances. You have your employment status, active, inactive, or terminated. If somebody's just gone for a temporary uh, amount of time, maybe you want to make them inactive. But if you, they truly are fired, you can terminate them. And then our next field over here, we have salary per day. Salary per day is the average salary per day that the employee earns. It, al it allows labor costs for salaried employees to be included on the labor percentage report is what this field does. And then underneath our options, you can see we have a few of them. The first one, require a card. Uh, this means the employee must use a magnetic card, keyboard, scanner, or fingerprint to enter the access code to gain access to the system. Our next option is enforce scheduling. You'll want to select this option if the employee is only allowed on the clock if there is a valid scheduled time otherwise a manager approval is required extend rights now sometimes you may want to select this option if the employee will have a superset of job rights composed uh, comprise of the rights associated with all of the employees jobs and what I mean by that is is if an employee has multiple jobs let's say he's a bartender Let's also make them a manager. And you have extend rights on. That means all job rights that are turned on will be accessible by this bartender, by this employee, whether they're a bartender or a manager. The clock in and clock out option is just what it sounds like. Uh, you'll select this one if only the time clock, time clock module is available to the employee. They will not see the front of the house. All they can do is literally clock in and out of the system. Our next option is the fingerprint at clock in. This requires the employee to use their fingerprint to clock in or clock out. And our last option is fingerprint required. You want to select this option if the employee is required to use their fingerprint to log in at all times. Okay, our little job section here, the employee can have up to six jobs and you can associate the pay rates with them accordingly. And our last set of options over here is skills. Skill levels represent the proficiency levels that an employee possesses for each defined skill. Skill levels are then used in conjunction with scheduling to ensure that only employees that meet or exceed the required skill level are scheduled. So skills are really relevant when you use scheduling. So that wraps it up uh, with our adding a new employee. Thanks for stopping by Focus Fanatics. Until next time, stay focused.